we said yes to an online migration of Azure Managed Instance using Azure Data Studio with the SQL migration extension. We continue that video series here today on Tales from the Field. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. If this is your first time finding us over at Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. Speaking of subscribe, woo, woo, to all those subscribers that are making it special and keeping this train rolling. For those of you who are new to the content, hit that like, hit that subscribe if you like what you're seeing. Speaking of content, on every Tuesday, we have a thing we call the Community Roundtable, where we gather up blogs and videos produced by you, the MVPs of the Azure Data Community, for the Azure Data Community. We also have this thing called MS Tech, Tech Bits that drops on Mondays and Wednesdays. You're watching one of those now. Let's get over to it. In this video, part two of a series of videos on migrating the Azure Managed Instance using Azure Data Studio. In part one of the video, we launched the wizard and we ran some assessments. In this video, we're going to collect some performance data. We're going to get some SKU recommendations. We're going to specify the details of our SQL Server, and we're going to create an Azure Data Migration Service minus the installation of the self-hosted integration runtime. Since we have backed up directly to URL. Okay, let's flip over. Here we've got our migration database at scale once again. You can see here what we're going to use is we're going to use our SKU recommendations, CLI scripts, and we're going to use some scripts today from the SQL Server to Azure SQL Managed using Azure Storage. We'll be using some components from there. Flipping over here to the next page, you'll see here through the portal, I just wanted to show that on our Data ADS MSQL SQL Server VM, we're putting some workload against it with HammerDB. Switching over to ADS, we're going to start a migration. We're going to start a new session. You've seen these steps. They're going to be similar to last week. We're going to click next here. We're going to select all databases for assessment. We know which ones passed last week. So we're going to select Azure SQL Managed Instance here. We're going to go view select. We're going to select stack overflow large. That's the database that we're migrating for this demo. And now this is where it's going to get new. We're going to get Azure recommendations. We're going to select collect performance data. Now we're going to put a folder to log all the performance metrics that we're gathering to. We're going to hit start. It's going to start a performance assessment. It's recommended you run this assessment during a time frame where you're going to get a representative sample of what's going to take place within your environment for a minimum of 10 minutes. So you can see here, it made a general recommendation of a Gen 5 4V core server. We can go ahead now and we can stop the data collector. Once we stop the data collector, we can go up to our Azure SQL Managed Instance box up here and we can click View Details. Once we click on this View Details, it's going to give us information about the target deployment type, the Azure configuration, the recommended storage, the recommendation reason, and some source properties on how it made these recommendations. So we can click off of this now. Once we leave the view details pane, let's go back and let's look at our recommendation parameters. Let's go ahead and select edit parameters. I generally choose for my scale factor 100 and percentile utilization 95%. A little information about scale factor there, a little bit about the 95th percentile and why we choose that. And you can choose to evaluate and enable preview features. So I didn't have any of those checked here for our demo. Depending upon your desired outcome or your environment, those values may change. All right, next up, we're going to run an evaluation now through CLI. We're going to run AZ Data Migration Performance Data Collection. It's going to go out here. It's going to gather a bunch of metrics just like we did through Azure Data Studio. Once that's done, you can see here that within our output folder, we're going to have three files. These files are going to be representative of the data we collected. We got one more step we need to do, though. We need to run AZ Data Migration Get SKU Recommendation. This is going to take those outputs, and it's going to build a recommendation for us, just like it gave us in Azure Data Studio. You can see here that it gave us a recommendation, but one more cool thing it does. It creates a report, an HTML report, that we can open up here in Edge, and we can see we can click on our output. 
then we can go and we can see our justifications and we can see our requirements. You see the compute size it made, but let's go over here and look at justifications. It's gonna give us justifications as to why it chose those fee cores or why it chose that this size. If we select on V requirements, you can see here more details about the requirements it thinks we need for the Azure SQL Managed Instance. It's worth hopping over to the Git Azure recommendation documentation. The link to this will be provided in the description of the video. Here you can see our supported sources and targets. That's good to know. The most important thing I find people like to know is what are we collecting? What we're collecting at instance level, the database level, and the file level. Go on over and take a look at this documentation to see what we're gathering. We're going to select next. We're going to select our Azure account. We're going to select our AD tenant, our subscription, our location of East US and the resource group that contains our data primary MI managed instance. Next, we're going to go and select our Azure database migration service. We're going to do an online migration coming from Azure Blob storage account. Here is where we would also choose our Azure database migration service. You can see I already have one created. Let's flip over to the portal real quick. I want to show you something. You could see there in Azure Data Studio, you could see the Data DMS, but you couldn't see this one on the bottom there because that is an older version. Let's go ahead and select create. I'm going to choose Azure SQL database managed instance. We're going to scroll down. You can see here it's giving a set of steps to install data migration service and the following supported source and targets. If we scroll down a little bit here, you can see open in Azure Data Studio, which is important to call out as the new database migration service can only be deployed via Azure Data Studio. Let's go ahead and hit create new. We're going to choose our resource group. We're going to call it data DMS prod ADS. We're going to go ahead and hit create. And then we're going to go ahead and create select done. Let's go back over here and we can see now in ADS, we can see our new Azure data migration service. Let's go back over to the portal. If we hit refresh, you can see here that our data DMS prod ADS is provisioning. So we have the new database migration service that we can use in our Azure Data Studio. Back here in Azure Data Studio, now if we look under Azure Database Migration Service, you can see both resource groups that contain a new database migration service show up here for us to choose. So we could choose one or the other to do our migration from our Azure SQL Server VM to our managed instance. We're going to click next, but we're going to stop here for this demo. This is where we're going to pick up next time. All right, CLI. So over here, you can see that we have AZ Data Migration SQL Service Create. We can run that, and it's going to create a database migration service for us. We can see that over here in our portal that it created a data DMS prod CLI. One thing I want to note is you could notice there was a slight difference between when we deployed the database migration service in Azure Data Studio and when we deployed it through the command line interface. In Azure Data Studio, we had to fill in the Azure SQL DB target information before we could get to the create database migration service, where with CLI, we were just able to step in and create our new data migration service without filling in that target information. Just a slight nuance there. All right, part two in the books of this series on how we're going to migrate our Azure SQL Server VM to an Azure managed instance. In part one of this series, we learned how we could launch the migrate to Azure SQL Wizard and Azure Data Studio. We also assessed our databases to see if there were any blockers that would keep us from migrating to the managed instance. In this part of the series here, we learned how we could gather performance metrics against our Azure SQL Server VM and then use those performance metrics to build a SKU, a possible SKU that we could deploy our managed instance to. We also learned how to create our Azure database migration service, the glue that binds all this together to move from our on-premises or our Azure SQL VM to our managed instance. In the next part of the series, we're going to start a migration. We're going to monitor that migration and we're going to do a final cutover. As always, we know where we like to keep this going down below in the comments and always be good to each other. Take
Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.